those of you who are joining for the first time today, Third Path Institute is a national nonprofit celebrating our 20th anniversary. And long before others discovered the importance of including men in the work-life integration discussion, for the science of pushing back at overwhelm so we can all work smarter, we were showing people how to do work, family, and leadership differently. Did you know that over 71,000 checked out our three resources last year, like the live and recorded versions of our Thursday webinars? We're glad you're here today, and as you will quickly discover, today's webinar truly celebrates all that we've learned in the last 20 years. And that is really an understatement today, because today I have got three people who are speaking about how they've been on a work-life journey for, for the entire 20 years that Third Path has been around, and what they've learned in the process around how to become actively engaged dads, um, what that meant about how they were arranging things both at work and at home. And here's a super bonus point. When you listen in today, you're going to find out that the things that they've learned are really relevant to COVID-19 and how to better manage the world we live in today. But what you see on our screen right now is that I am giving this uh, a special tribute to Matt Schneider today. He lost his father last week. And I thought it was important to recognize him and the amazing work that City Dads Group has done to really strengthen the resources available from fathers. Um, and so I wanted to give him a shout out and say, Matt, you've done an amazing job. Your dad is proud of you. And I've invited a couple of City Dads Group members to join us at the very end of the call to share their insights around being fathers as well. So. Today's focus in particular you're going to hear is about the role that men can play as fathers. And that what you're going to see is that when you engage men to be equally involved at home, it makes work redesign gender neutral. Both men and women think about how to do work differently so they can have time for the things that they care about. And what you're going to hear from the stories today is all of these dads are helping change our workplaces to better understand that caregiving is something men want to do just like women. And in particular, we're going to look at it from the home side and then the work side. Um, and I'm going to have two of our leaders talk about how they made some changes at home early in their careers. Now their kids are grown. I mean, you'll see their pictures in a little bit. Um, but I've encouraged them in particular to think about what were they doing when they had babies and toddlers and preschoolers as fathers to be actively involved in the care of their children. And so we're going to get them to talk about how did they create a team approach at home? How did those needs of their families keep on changing? And how did they work together to find a schedule that made sense for both parents? First, we're going to hear from Will Rowe. He's been involved with Third Path forever and has an amazing story. And then after that, we're going to hear from Rob Hickox, who also has been a, um, Michelle Hickox is a board member. Um, and so I've known Rob through Michelle forever as well. They both have amazing stories. And as you can see from their pictures, their children are all grown up. But we're going to get them to talk about, so how did you do it, Will? When your children were very young, did you have a team approach at home? Did those needs change? I can only imagine when I look at the pictures right now. Um, and how did you keep on changing and shaping your solution as your children got older? Uh, tell us a little bit of how you made it, make it work when those two wonderful children that look like they're in their mid-20s there uh, were so little. Tell us, Will. We want to hear your story. Well, thank you, Jessica. I'm really glad to be here. I have a lot of stories to tell. I'll be brief, though, on this particular high-level story. Um, I have been working with Jessica since 2003. Uh, I have two children, Misha and Stephen. And uh, I think this all started in my discussions with my wife, Teresa. But even before we got married, uh, I was trying to get my head around these questions of having children and raising children. And my wife, being a pediatrician, and I was uh, going through grad school. Um, we both agreed we need to have 
a team approach, we need to both, uh, and we both wanted to be the primary caregivers for our kids. So uh, when we got married, which was actually back in 84, um, at least I had my, my head, head ready. Um, our first child, Stephen, uh, was born in 1992. Um, and I was working in a consulting firm at the time. And before he was born, I said to myself, okay, I got to change my schedule. Went into the leadership of the firm and said, I need to go four days a week because I want to be home on Fridays. Well, my wife being a pediatrician, she was going to be working Fridays. She's also going to be working weekends some. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be taking care of kids on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and uh, then I'm going to be working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Teresa also had to work uh, Wednesday. Anyway, um, you know, we had gone through birthing classes together. We had thought about having children. And when Stephen came along, uh, I got a yes from, from work. And there I was at home. I wasn't ready for being so sleep deprived, I don't think. I remember driving home <laughs> from the hospital. And uh, I remember Stephen didn't want to sleep for 10, 10 months. And I remember yeah. I could stay up longer than, than, uh, than Teresa. So anyway, we, uh, we basically took turns. We eventually got into sort of a routine, it took a while. Um, we didn't have a lot of family around, but we certainly had neighbors. Um, and we actually invited a person we knew to help us one day a week. So it was a lot of communication, a lot of learning on my part, learning how to feeding, changing, reading, playing, all those sorts of things, uh, especially in the zero to three years, um, getting the car seats in, but a lot of communication. And then I don't know if this will help, but uh, resting, trying to find a way to rest, restore, resist doing too much, uh, which is easy to do, uh, and then repeat, <laughs> rest, restore, resist, yeah. and repeat. Um, I think the bottom line is, as they got older, uh, over time, um, I just tried to develop an integrated schedule. Uh, I tried to do some time shifting with regard to work. So I have flexibility as they got a little bit older, okay? Now they have activities. Now I'm driving to school and I'm picking them up from school. Yep, I'm on a conference call, but I'm gonna hang up as soon as they get in the car. So it became pretty dynamic, uh, a lot of learning, uh, not perfect for sure. Uh, but I would say in summary, Jessica, with uh, Stephen and Misha, you know, as they got older, um, it was a lot of constant communication with my wife, trying to say yes to her as much as I could. But sometimes, you know, I just had to learn. I just had to learn to do it a little differently. Um, and then, um, over, you know, over time, just creating that integrated schedule and uh, planning um, at least a week at a time. So I could say a lot more, but that's the beginning uh, of my story. Back to you. And I love, I love your phrase, time shifting. Here's what it's meant to me when I've heard you talk about it. And tell me if, if this is a good description of time shifting. With, with flexible schedules and remote work, because Will was an early adapter of remote work. He figured out how to do work in a different way, work from home, work in you know, all kinds of places. Um, but what Will learned was, especially when the kids became school age, that maybe he wanted to be figure out how to be present for them in the afternoon when he was in charge, and then do some of that work later in the evenings. Um, and so it wasn't like, I'm gonna work all day and then work in the evenings. He was trying to flip things around to, to uh, time shift, so to move some of his workplace to later in the evenings, uh, so he had more time for his family. He's also very actively involved with his community. Is that what you mean by time shifting, Will? Yeah, absolutely. As they got uh, a little bit uh, older, but even sometimes around nap schedules, when they were up, I needed to yep. be with them. And so I basically yep. said, okay, I'm going to not have meetings at this time. I'll put the, put the, that off. And very often between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. and sometimes 3 to 6, I wasn't doing any work. But then after dinner yep. and after they went to bed, I had to go back and check emails and do that sort of thing. But it was okay for me because I felt, um, you know, when they were sleeping, um, it was a, it was a good use of my time to be with them. Yeah. Well, something you can think about, and we'll come back to you about this later in the call is, and how was this, how did this change your relationship with your kids? And how did this change your relationship with Teresa? And again, uh, we will come back to that, but you know, I can only imagine uh, that the kind of role you played has, you know, really, and you started at such a young age with your kids has really, blossomed into something quite profound for a, a whole family. So we'll hear more about that a little bit later. 
Um, Rob, what I love about your story, and as people are listening in today, a big message in today's webinar is that every family is different. They're going to find a solution that's right for them. So there's no one size fits all solution for families. Um, but Rob, you too created a real team approach at home. You kept on shifting it as your kids got older. Um, you know, and you really worked together with um, Michelle to create a, a schedule that worked for both of you and your kids as they continued to get grow up. Tell us a little about your story, Rob. We want to hear. Yes, thank you, Jessica. Um, I'm Rob Hickox, my um, wonderful, lovely wife, Michelle. And then we have two daughters, Cameron and Abby. Um, it's definitely been quite the journey over the years. Uh, initially, uh, kind of the first transition we went through as, as we were um, learning of our expectancy with Cameron, uh, we both worked in public accounting and we thought it was a good opportunity that I would find uh, a little bit more flexible work situation. Um, and that allowed us to create a schedule where Michelle would be responsible for the girls of the morning, um, get them to daycare, school, um, and then I would able be able to leave later in the afternoon and be in charge of them of an evening. It was very important to us that our girls didn't spend, um, you know, we, we relied on after school care, but it was important to us that they didn't have to stay there until six, seven at night. So it allowed me to get them 3.34 in the afternoon and, and be able to have that one-on-one -on -one time with, with both our daughters. Um, then really our second big transition we went through is as the girls were growing up, um, getting into the elementary school years, uh, early middle school years, Michelle was able to find a flexible arrangement through her work that allowed her to spend summers with, with our daughters at home. Um, she still, I think found herself working quite a bit, but she was still able to have that one-on-one -on -one time with both of our daughters and not uh, not have to rely on um, care throughout the summer. And that, that I think, developed relationships. Both of those arrangements allowed us to develop great relationships with uh, both of our daughters. The other thing we, we uh, will touch on networking, um, we rely, we did rely on you know, neighbor, neighbor, mothers, fathers to step in at times and help us in need of dropping uh, daughters or picking them up after school. Um, but it was also our girls were very active in, in youth sports a whole, all their years. Uh, and, and we created great networks with other parents to rely on that too, getting them to and from different activities. Um, which, as everyone can imagine, that was quite a challenge at times, um, getting them all their different places. But, you know, we also found it successful, successful that we would, Michelle and I would communicate pretty much weekend, weekend, week out. We would look at the next week and figure out how we were going to make after school activities work um, and do what we can to fit that in. because. That was a very important part of our girls um, growing up over the years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and Rob, that's such a great point because um, communication is such an important part of the solution as we've been all managing the major changes that happened around COVID-19. And I feel so proud about the Third Path community because, uh, you know, parents who've been practicing these ideas have learned how to communicate well and so suddenly major change happened but they had that skill set about how to have how to have a conversation and keep on thinking about well how do we do it now now that we don't have that network of support um, you know because so many people don't have uh, child care friends and family uh, school right now however what Rob's pointing out is when we do get past COVID-19, which we will do at some point, that concept of a network of support you're hearing from both Will and Rob, whether that's childcare, school, friends, neighbors, it's such a critical ingredient. And both of these families invested in making that happen. Uh, so that's really great points. Communication, network of support, working as a team, having those solutions change as your kids get older. Um, before we go on and hear a little bit from Ivan about the changes he made at work, 
you know, when you look back, Rob, was this what you were expecting to do as a as a dad, um, balancing work and family? How is it different than what you expected? And and what do you think about all that? You know, I think I think it was pretty much what I expected. Um, you know, I growing up over my ch childhood years, I was blessed to have parents that um, had a you know similar situation and and worked together as a team. So. Um, yeah, I think it, it really did meet my expectations, but, you know, there were definitely uh, some challenges along the way back to the activities and um, it still was a little bit different, um, you know, as we progressed over the years and, and dealt with things that were thrown at us. So. Right, right. But 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 the, the key point being, and I hope the listeners hear this today, what we're modeling to our children is so powerful. And so another important point from today's webinar is that, you know, the simple act of getting dads involved in a regular way at home just models something completely different to our kids, which then means they grow up wanting something really different as well. Um, we have a story that we're going to share next uh, where the focus is more on what Ivan did to change things on the work side, but when you hear it, Ivan's story, what you're going to learn is change is possible at any point in time. You can go ahead and make this change at any point in time. Um, and what Ivan did, uh, although was a huge change on, uh, on the home side, what we're going to ask Ivan to talk about more is about what he did on the work side to make that change happen. And when I put his picture, picture up, you'll see that Ivan made this change so that he would care for his granddaughter. Um, and it's an amazing story about how he just knew that this was a really important thing to do. And so he wanted to basically spend Mondays with his dog, his granddaughter. And I think what you'll hear when Ivan talks about it is that his sense of what was going to happen on Mondays was a little bit different than the actual truth of what happened on Mondays. Um, but in the, again, he'll be telling you a little bit about the conversations he had at work to set up a compressed work week and be able to spend Mondays with his granddaughter um, and some of the other conversations he had to have to make that work as, as he got more information about what it was really like to be home with a baby. Um, so Ivan, I'm so glad you're here today and I hope your story inspires everybody listening in that change can happen at any point in time. Tell us a little bit about what, what, how you change things um, and how you made it work at work. Thank you, Jessica, and everyone on the call today. Um, yeah, I made the change uh, not on how to uh, work with my children, because my children were already grown. But at the time that my daughter had her first child, uh, which is now 14 years ago, and I had decided that I wanted to have a relationship with my granddaughter that she wasn't able to have with her grandparents or that my daughters were not able to have with their grandparents. And I went to my daughter as she was trying to determine childcare and said, well, I don't want to send Madeline to childcare. I'd like to split it up with parents, you know, grandparents to handle. And so I said, well, I'll take one day. And they laughed at me. Uh, I'm a guy who had worked uh, all the time for many, many years, um, was a good father. Um, but now I wanted to take on a responsibility they didn't think was possible. And I convinced, they said, well, how's work going to go without you there on Mondays? And I said, don't worry, I will work it out. And, and I'll get into that in a moment. But just with uh, what I started with my granddaughter, Madeline, 14 years ago, um, I took Mondays. And for every Monday, for the next 12 years, uh, I took care of her. Um, from when she couldn't walk uh, to when she went to preschool. I drove her. I stayed with her. I spent the time with her until her mother came home from work. And two years later, um, a boy was born, and he joined my team. And for all those years, Mondays were my day, and it has changed my life with them, and I think has changed their life with me. Uh, but on the other side of the coin is, well, how could I just take Mondays? And I was part of the management team at our firm. 
uh, and when I decided I wanted to do this, I went to them and I said, at that time, guys, um, I want to take Mondays and work from home um, and take care of my granddaughter. I said, well, you can't do that. And I said, don't worry, I will work it out. Um, I had a team that reported to me our human resources, our information technology, um, and, and other groups. And I said, I'll work it out. I'll come up with a plan, uh, which I did. Uh, it, it had a rocky start as we began because in those days, we didn't have all of the tools we have today, you know, Zoom and conferencing uh, and the ability to work from home. Um, but I approached work in this new way. I got my partners to buy into it that nothing would be dropped off. Uh, and they said, all right, we'll see. But if something goes wrong, uh, you're going to have to be back here. And I said, things will not go wrong. And so I set up a system with my team as far as the times during the day that we could coordinate uh, conference calls or other types of meetings. Um, and I also made sure that there were people available, so to speak, at overlap schedule. Um, so my work was during the day, and I thought it was very simple because everyone told me that young babies sleep a lot. They didn't tell me that those naps are 20 minutes a piece. And so they, <laughs> she was up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, so I really was, she didn't take three hour naps. Um, but I communicated via email with my staff. And when we had to speak, we would set up a time to do it. Um, and my team was very effective and efficient. And giving them more responsibility resulted in them doing a, a terrific job and growing much better. Uh, and we have done that uh, up through um, the age of 13 for my granddaughter because I said, I'll keep taking her to school as long as, and I'll park the car and I'll walk with her into school until the day she doesn't want to hold my hand anymore. And that went through the beginning of the sixth grade. And she didn't really want me to hold her hand. And so now she's in <laughs> junior high school and uh, she's become a, a beautiful girl. But my relationship with her is more than I could ever imagine. And I have been a proponent of work from home and coordination with our firm. And the, the pandemic has now put all of us working from home. But clearly we were on that precipice of change for many years now and um, a proponent of the work-life balance between husbands and wives. Yeah, yeah. And Ivan, you just nailed exactly where I wanted to go next, which is in each of your stories, Will, Rob, and Ivan, the experiences you had of understanding that families needed time and energy, uh, that work could be done differently, work could be done remotely, you guys were learning something that then became so useful when COVID-19 hit. And so, Ivan, I'm imagining that your organization turned to you to help navigate some of the changes that they were going to have to experience suddenly of having people work remotely and that you were the expert that they could turn to. And what a lucky thing that was. Has that been true, that you've been a real resource to your organization as you've been navigating these very different waters? Oh, for sure. It has been my responsibility at first to convince my partner group that it was the direction we needed to go in order to develop people and to deal with work life because most families, both parents, were working in some context. And we couldn't assume, as what was done previously, that the, the man was more important. Uh, we have a lot of women. 80% of our employees are women. And when a child got sick, our, our employee, woman employee, would have to take off because her husband's job was more important. And that has changed. Uh, and there is more balance between husbands and wives. And we have a lot of single parents. And again, it's dealing with that and trying to be accommodating to everyone this whole COVID-19 uh, we have single parents with now children that can't go to child care and they're at home and they can't work an eight hour day uh, because there's too much for a, a six month old. 
So we've adjusted things for them. So yes, that, that has, has been a priority uh, really for the firm and, and we have slowly grown into it, but it is part of the nature of, of how we operate today. Yeah, yeah. And again, I hope everybody listening in today understands that each of these dads was taking a real, um, they were a pioneer. They were, they were not looking around and seeing a lot of other grandfathers or fathers doing similar things. Um, yet, now all of their organizations have benefited from that pioneering role that they took. Even though it took a little bit of courage to do it, their organizations are now benefiting. Rob Hickox was one of the first persons to offer um, to have a, a remote work team. And boy, was that useful when suddenly everybody had to work remotely. So I hope as you listen in, what you're starting to see, and it's what we've been talking about for the last few webinars, is that whether you're just trying to balance work and family in normal times or during the COVID-19 times, it's a little bit about the work you do, a little bit about what's happening at home, a little bit about what your workplace is doing, um, but that you can really find what we call triple win answers, ways to approach your work that's good for you, good for your work, and good for your colleagues and clients. And as you heard in Ivan's story, his team actually even started functioning at a higher level when he was taking some time away from work and encouraging them to take on some more responsibilities. What it all comes down to, and this is where I'm going to get each of these uh, dads to share some more insights, is if you want to live an integrated life, it's about boundary setting. Being able to say, I want time for work and I want time for family. And it turns out what I learned for the last 20 years when people l learn the skill of boundary setting, and again, not in a rigid way, but in a firm but flexible way, they also learn how to better create some recharge time. And um, this is something I, I feel like is probably also useful, useful as we all go through COVID-19. You can let work take over your lives, but uh, we want to set up work in a way where we have time for our lives. That said, I think each of these leaders is probably also managing quite a lot. There are going to be periods of time when we, when we don't feel like we're doing the best job of balancing work and family, and, and going through a crisis like COVID-19 can be one of those times. Um, but what I want to talk next about is, you know, what have you guys learned around boundary setting? What's helped you manage those boundaries? Or when you've gotten off track, get back on track? What are some things that you've learned over the years that has made it worthwhile to keep on trying to make smart boundaries work for both work, family, and creating time for your, your lives just to recharge? So, Will, I know that you that you and I've talked a lot about this. This is not always easy, um, but you guys you've done some pretty amazing things around boundary setting, um, both in the everyday uh, way, but also taking a big, huge risk one time and and, and taking a, a trip um, in a Winnebago. What would you like to talk about uh, boundary setting, and do you want to tell us a little bit about that Winnebago trip? Yeah, sure. Um... I think if my wife was here, she'd say I'm not the best boundary person in the world. But I started um, trying to set boundaries when I, you know, with with my with my work. First of all, um, you know, I had to take a risk and go in and say I want four days a week because uh, I yeah. need Fridays at home. And I have to tell you that Fridays at home with my son before my daughter was born for years, he still remembers that. It's just unbelievable what we used to do on Fridays and then weekends. Um, in terms of setting boundaries, it was also uh, when I was available, you know, creating this integrated schedule between sort of the red stuff on my calendar, which was work and the green stuff, which was was life or home, you know, and that time shifting, I learned how to basically shut down work during the day when I had to, and I needed to and wanted to, and then turn it back on when I didn't feel, you know, too much guilt, uh, because most people were sleeping. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the sabbatical, um, you know, I, you know, I kind of got myself because uh, I work maybe too hard sometimes. But anyway, I got myself into these bigger positions in the company, and and all of a sudden responsibilities got bigger. But after seven years of being in the company that I'm in now, I uh, I actually uh, negotiated with my wife and lost the negotiation. 
thankfully. Um, and she said, we're going to take a six month sabbatical because I'm in between jobs and you can do it. So anyway, long story short, after about a month of trying to get my head around that, I went and asked for a six month sabbatical and they said yes. So my kids were six and 10 at the time. And when we came back, they were seven and 11. We did 15,000 miles uh, starting in New England and all the way out to the West Coast and all the way back uh, through the Texas and Florida and back to Virginia where we live. Uh, it was a fabulous time of learning uh, and my company accepted me back. I'm still there. Uh, it's been 24 years total at the company. So I yeah. guess in terms of boundaries, I would just say, Jessica, ask. Take the uh, take the yeah. step of asking if it's an employee or if it's something else that's too big, have the communication and see if you can have people come alongside you and set the boundary. Yeah, 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 no, wonderful. And so I hope, again, as you listen in, what an inspiring example of how as your kids get older, there's some opportunities to really think outside the box about how to approach everything. Rob, I learned a long time ago that um, Michelle is really good at setting boundaries because it sounds like you guys do a lot on the weekends around seeing family and being involved with your alma maters um, and that she really was someone who taught her current organization how to think differently about setting some boundaries around weekend expectations around weekend work. Is this something that you've practiced in your own life too, Rob, around setting boundaries or have you learned other lessons around boundary setting? Oh, no, I think it's it's exactly what you just said about Michelle. I mean, I, it's just us working together on um, creating those boundaries for each other and our relationship. Um, I think it's very important for um, parents to realize that part of that recharging, um, part of that life family is your relationship with each other also. And I think your children, you know, can only can only thrive off seeing their father and mothers have such a wonderful relationship. So really, I think it, I think it still goes back down to uh, communication between each other, working together, and really, I just it's a discipline. It's um, yeah. it, it's just you've got to make it very important. Yeah, yeah, because there's always more work to do. There is always more work to do. Period. There's always more work to do, and so it's almost kind of like this kind of like okay, I commit to weekends or I commit to whatever it is that you're trying to commit to, um, and and really, there otherwise work will just take over. And that's the last area about boundary setting. I, if I, want, I wanted you to talk a little bit about, have you learned a little bit about setting up some boundaries around vacations, or is there another topic around boundary setting that you think you've learned about, Ivan, that you want to share? Well, I'll do vacations, but a little story actually when I was a father, and we had mm -hmm. our first daughter, um, and, and I don't know, she was born in March, so this was in April. Uh, and I was a CPA and it was tax season and we had finished all the work and you work a lot of time then. And um, it was just crazy. And I came home on Friday and I said, Nikki, you know, we just got to go to Las Vegas this weekend. We got to get away for a few days. And she hmm. said, and what do you plan to do with our baby? Because I just was so into work. I literally for that moment forgot we had a baby. And, and so that was kind of her putting me um, straight as to, you know, what's where are the priorities? And, and that was a big yeah. awakening for me at that time, which is now 40 years ago. And I still remember it, you know, today. But the part yeah. about boundaries, again, my wife jumped in um, and set me straight. We, we go on vacations you know, often. Um, and when we were on vacation, my phone would ring and I we're walking down the street. And I answered it and it would annoy the hell out of my wife. She says, so it's no fun going on vacation if you're just going to pick up the phone and do work all the time. And so, again, with, with her help, I said, OK, that's not really going to happen anymore. Um, and I, I shut it off. So when we go on vacation, people know they can call me, they can email me, but don't expect to get a response right away. Um, and we have now lived that life uh, for a period of time because, as you said, Jessica, work um, does not end. There is always nope. another question. There is always another issue. And if we make that a priority all the time, uh, we suffocate ourselves. And so yep. you have to set yep. those boundaries um, in order to make it work or 
you know, you, you will, I don't want to say destroy yourself, but you won't make the progress that we talk about at third path. And that's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. And again, when we, when we're, um, when we're thinking about this as our teams can help us make this all happen, we just get smarter and smarter about that. We, we aren't the only ones um, that has to answer that question and uh, we can set up some systems and model for everybody and at home and on, at work that, you know, having a life can help us work smarter. Um, so where we're going next um, is to uh, reflect again that what we're talking about is ideas that can be applied today. Suddenly, we were all working remotely, if you could work remotely. Um, suddenly, we didn't have school or childcare. Uh, suddenly, parents were really dealing with a very different landscape. And what we saw was that these skills that you heard from Will and Rob and Ivan really apply well to helping families manage during COVID-19, creating that team, looking for the unique solution for that family needs at that moment, creating a schedule that everybody understands, sharing that schedule if you have kids who are old enough so they can play a role in helping that schedule work, uh, checking in regularly. We heard Rob talk about that. Uh, you know, no matter whether it's COVID-19 or just life as it's normal, a regular communication is really important. And what you've heard from all of them is uh, building in some time to recharge um, is critical to make it all work. Uh, but it's also changes on the work side. So again, during COVID-19, it's the same thing that you heard Ivan talk about. You need to communicate with people who are your managers, in his case, his peers at work around how he wanted to make a change. You need to keep on regular check-ins. Again, he kind of learned, wow, having a baby at home is a little different than I expected, but how do I keep that communication going? Um, create some coordinated work time. Okay, so I can't talk the way I thought on Mondays, but here's the better way that we'll now keep our communications coordinated and our time working coordinated. Um, and remember that flex is a two-way street. I need some flexibility, but sometimes work will need some flexibility so that you can take care of yourself and your family as you get through COVID-19. As promised, today's webinar is really talking about helping fathers follow a more integrated path. Um, and I'm gonna circle back afterwards to uh, Will and Rob and Ivan at the end of the webinar to get their thoughts about what really helped you be the father you wanted to be. Was it one of these issues listed here? Or was it something else um, that really helped you be the father that you want to be? So I will give you guys the last word. But before we do that, I mentioned that we have a couple of special guests, Sean, Sean and Sergio, who joined us today, both part of that wider community of City Dads group. They've been listening in and thinking about how this is connected to their own experiences of balancing work and family in general and in COVID-19. So I'm going to give them a chance to talk a little bit too. Sean, as you listen in, did some of it sound familiar to some of the experiences you've been managing yourself as you balance work and family? And any insights about how you've made it work during COVID-19? Tell us a little about your family story, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, as, as the, the slide up there shows, I'm a, I'm a dad of four. We, our, our kids range from about seven and a half months now to eight and a half. And there's been a lot of transition for us uh, as COVID-19 hit and schools shut down, uh, our local school district moved to a uh, distance learning kind of setup, which has been a lot. Um, I've been really grateful that I've been fully employed this entire time. Um, I work predominantly as a systems administrator um, for Right in the Rain, which is uh, uh, waterproof, weather resistant notebooks and writing utensils and such. And so we were designated as uh, essential manufacturing, and I was able to keep going and transition to full-time work from home. Um, it's been a, a much smoother transition than I think a lot of people are experiencing. Uh, both my my boss and I were, were a two-man IT shop for it. Um, he is in his second run of kids in a sense. Um, he has kids about our age, but he also has uh, two grown adult sons. Um, but he and his wife uh, are 
in the adoption process and have been, uh, they have four, I think now. Um, and they have a very similar situation. Their kids have special needs. Our kids have special needs. Um, specifically, both both of our families deal with sensory processing disorder. And so that adds its own challenges in uh, being kind of cooped up in the house for several months at a time. But he's been very understanding and both of, both he and I have had a great um, great open line of communication when it comes to our needs. We both recognize that our jobs are essential to the business and, and making sure that we're able to stay on task, but that our families come first. And so having that support from my boss has been huge in my ability yeah. to take time when I need to. Um, even though Washington State doesn't have paternity to leave, um, I was able to take a mix of vacation days and sick leave to give myself two weeks off to really two and a half weeks um, off from uh, from the office when our last child was born, which is huge. We've been able to somehow finagle some mix of leave to give myself time off with each of our children, but this definitely felt like it was the biggest. And so having that line of communication in the office has been great. And because of COVID-19, we're looking at you know the possibility of adjusting what both of our in-office hours look like moving forward, even after all of the restrictions have been uh, lifted. So that's going to be really huge for yeah. us at home. As you said earlier, um, you know, my my wife and I have uh, a great partnership. And so that's been the way that we've set it up from the very beginning of it all. We've really focused hard on making sure that we have an open line of communication, that we can be open and honest with each other, even if that means having, you know, difficult conversations until one, two o'clock in the morning in between feedings <laughs> of a baby. Uh, it's a priority. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a huge priority for us and the kids know that. Um, yeah. That's been yeah. very clear to them from the earliest days of their ability to comprehend what it means to be, have a mom and a dad and mom and dad are married. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's there's definitely a lot that they've been speaking about that I can relate to. A lot that I can't just because, again, different family scenarios, different work scenarios. Um, you know, working in IT, it's very easy for me to be able to remote into systems and fix problems. But right now, yeah. I go in once, maybe twice a week, to handle some tickets for a few hours, and then I come right back to the office and do everything remote as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Well, again, I think the underscoring that communication both at work and at home and, and how who our boss is makes such a difference. Those are all such great and important messages, Sean. Thank you so much. Yeah. One Sergio, other thing I'd love to add. Um, oh, I was gonna... oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, just one, one quick thing that I think has been real critical in this. Um, and this mm -hmm. is something we've done from the very beginning of our marriage. We've we've never been well off financially. Um, we both come from low income families and, and uh, that's that's two different sides of, of the same coin for, for both of us, for our background. But one thing that we have set is that for us, at least every Tuesday night is date night. And that does not usually mm -hmm. or often mean going out somewhere, <laughs> but it's been designating that time and letting the kids understand that it's date night. Okay. We know what that means a little bit earlier to bed, but mom and daddy have time. So yeah. usually that just means us Yay. watching the show, but yeah, like yep. it's, you know, it's, it's not, a big crazy thing that we do, but it is being intentional about that time every single week. Yeah. And that's yeah. been, we've been married yeah. for 12, just over 12 years. Now. Yeah, no, I think that this whole theme around couple time and investing in couple time is uh, really uh, coming loud and clear in this um, webinar. And it's, it's so critical, uh, yeah. you know, Sean, because the health of that couple helps the whole family. And, and again, like you said, sometimes it requires some difficult conversations, yeah. um, but it's, uh, you know, they're worthwhile, as you can see from the legacy of these long relationships of uh, Will, um, Rob, and Ivan too. So wonderful, yeah, thank absolutely. you. Yeah. Sergio, Sergio, and, and I know you also have a strong relationship at home, Sergio. Uh, every time you've talked about your wife, you are so proud of her, and and uh, so I, I know that that goes to the territory for you too. But when you listened in, uh, what were some themes that you felt like resonated with you? And tell us a little about 
how you're balancing things and what it means to be a father for you, Sergio. Well, I want to say hello to everyone. I hope you guys are all healthy. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, just uh, I'm, I'm a new father. I'm a, the parent of a three-year-old, so I'm new pretty much to parenting. Um, I was listening to everyone, everyone here, and it seems like I have so much to learn, but at the same time, it makes it so easy for me to have uh, role models, right, that I can look up to from um, some of you that have adult children to some of you who have, you know, your second set of children. So it's, um, you know, it's it's super nice listening to your stories. In my case, um, I am the primary parent just because my wife is a military officer in the U.S. Army. So she is um, busy with work um, and she makes the most of, you know, of her role. So whenever she gets home, she, she switches her, changes clothes from her uniform into her, her mother clothes, her mommy clothes, and she, you know, takes care of everything. Uh, that's uh, Stella, my daughter. So um, that way I have time to work on my projects. Um, right now, uh, m a lot of my projects rely on social media. I am a Facebook brand ambassador, so I get flown to different conferences and events to speak on behalf of Facebook brand, uh, spe specifically the community uh, or groups that a lot of you guys belong to. I'm a, I'm a brand ambassador for that. Um, one of the things that I have learned with this situation is that, uh, you know, it's being in the house so much time without a plan, it's, it can be overwhelming. Um, just the fact that you are home and, uh, you know, you can't go out. Uh, still in North Carolina where I live, playgrounds are closed. So uh, the other day we went for a walk in the park and my daughter saw the playground and it was taped up. Like if, if it was a crime scene, it was, right. it was, you know, it was so sad, you know. And I yeah. had to talk to her before that to let her know that playgrounds are closed. And, you know, she's getting the whole thing that's going on. However, you know, being at home, it's it's either time to kind of like make those projects that you had put on hold for a while and take charge of the situation and say, well, I'm going to work on this, which I have been. Um, I'm going back to school. I enrolled in um, in school again to to do a whole different career that I can rely on work from home uh, a little bit more since, you know, being a um, a social worker is one of the things that you need to be in office and it's such a um, beautiful job but however it's it's very draining emotionally and i said to myself that i wasn't going to go back to that type of work um, directly however i do it through my organization and my community so um i decided to take care of that and take charge had a conversation with my wife um and kind of like this this Pretty much this whole time, I've been taking care of myself and my mental health and trying to decide where uh, where I came from to know where I'm headed now. And, you know, I took, I took up on some special projects that were on hold that since April I started and right now are giving me, uh, I, I'm, I'm full of opportunities. Like I have my hands full. And I know when when this whole situation uh, is it goes away, we I'm going to have a lot uh, a lot of, of my plate. But it's that kind of stuff that's satisfying that you wake up yeah. looking forward to go on your computer and working. And um, it's been um, it's been super good because it's kind of like giving me the opportunity to know what I'm capable of in terms of yeah. my time management and my and, and the time with my family. So, um, yeah. you know, I'm learning too. And, and what I learned from this experience is that, you know, um, now that my daughter's three, that she's uh, a little bit more um, independent, uh, there's time for home, for taking care of the things that need to be taken care of at home. There's time for us as a family. There's time for me as a man. And there's time for me as, as, as a as an entrepreneur, as an educator, to keep going with those right. projects that I have. Yeah, 
Yeah, and Sergio, and, and it's like it's such a it's so good for our souls to approach our lives that way. Um, I mean, really, what I hear as I listen to all of your stories, and we're going to wrap up in a second, um, is that you know, and Ivan, maybe this is especially relevant to you, but it's like there was such a rigid assumption about what men were going to do and the role they were going to play at work and at home. And there really has been a revolution in the last 20 years since Third Path has been founded around what we can do as fathers. And I think it's made life better for men. Clearly, it's made life better for women. And it's wonderful for our kids. Uh, so this has really been a, a vibrant time for, for men and women to think differently about work and family. And you guys are such great examples of it. So I'm going to give the last word to uh, first Will, uh, then Rob, then Ivan. When you think back, you know, is there one last message you want to share with, you know, people who are trying to think about the role of fathers today or the role they want to take as a father today? Um, any last message you want to share, Will, and then I'll ask Rob the same question. Yeah, I've jotted down too many things. Um, <laughs> just having this the mindset of shared care from the start and keeping it in front mm -hmm. of you, this is what's important. And it may not be easy, and, and you've got to learn. Uh, and being all in, you know, with your spouse. Um, to me, it, it's built really lasting and intentional and deep relationships with our children. I think they know they're loved. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I would have to say flexibility. The last comment here is uh, flexibility on a daily basis. I've learned how important that is. Communication on a daily basis, C difficult yeah. conversations on a daily basis. But in the end, <laughs> it helped prepare us for the future unexpected things that happened, you know, that does have yeah. to do, do happen to us uh, and, and yeah. with our children. So it's, it strengthened yeah. us. Yeah. That's exactly, that's my big point, Will, is that you guys kept on having to learn to be flexible, and we had to all become flexible when COVID-19 hit, so uh, it really helped you have one leg up on the process. Rob, any advice for people trying to think ahead about their role as a father or, you know, at, in, encouraging their husband to play a role as a father? Rob, any thoughts? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, I do want to say I, you know, part of what um, over my years, I had the perfect role model on my father. This will be this will be my first father Father's Day without him. But I definitely had had a perfect role model. Um, but second of all, just, you know, along the along the years with my wife, Michelle, it, it became very evident that her career was flourishing. Um, and, and so it was just very important to me that I supported that and that that meant that I played an even more important role with my, my daughters. And it also meant, it meant a lot to me. Now it's, it's proving fruitful that, um, that my daughter saw that, that their mother could, could succeed in, the, in this world. And I, I'm starting to see that in my daughters that they're gonna succeed as well. So it was just very important yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure it's going to influence who they are looking for and partners too, Rob. Wonderful. Ivan, I wanted to give you the last word, and then I'm going to wrap up with a little bit about the Thursday webinars, but Ivan, your last word? Yeah, I, I would I would say that, you know, you, you can't fear the change of what used to be. Um, you know, we, we evolve as, as as people and organizations trying to be more effective. Uh, we've learned things. Uh, this COVID-19 is, is, in the end, going to be a positive because it's going to make companies realize that people can work at home um, and can work at home effectively as long as the structure is there to provide for that. And and I, I think that, you know, men uh, who, who I speak for uh, can get a great deal out of spending more time with their children. Uh, I go back to my granddaughter um, I will have a relationship with her forever and uh, that is what I wanted to happen and I was able to achieve that by again the structure we set up you still have responsibilities at work and you have responsibilities at home and it's balancing those two things to make it all work for everyone yeah wow thank you I know it was a life-changing experience for you, Ivan, um, and so glad to be on the journey with all of you guys. Um, so 
what we want to just remind you is that, believe it or not, this is kind of our official last webinar of the season. We are going to do a little something in July to help people think a little bit about creating recharge time over the summer, so look for more information soon about that. You can also find all of our webinars on our website. Uh, the recordings are both in audio and YouTube, so you can watch these too. Um, and so I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for joining us, everybody today who was part of this uh, conversation, but also for you guys listening in. And stay tuned because we will have a live Q&A uh, if you have some questions for any of the participants in today's webinar. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for a really wonderful webinar.